Yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 202 of the How to Survive podcast. My name is Chris and joining me as ever is our very own stuttering Sherville. Joe, <laughs> do I make you proud? Yeah, every day. Um, to like, I mean, I built an entire intro idea around that. Right. I was going to wait till you got halfway through and then just start shouting, Stuttering Stanley! Stuttering Stanley! You beat me there to you it. Go. Yeah. Well, you're, you're stuttering Sherval because that is alliteration for you. This yeah. week's film, if you haven't guessed already, is the alliterative Sixth Sense. And I will be insisting on pronouncing it Sixth. Mm. Like it's spelled. Yeah. Uh, if you hadn't seen the Sixth Sense, uh, you've had 20 years in which you could have rectified that. Uh, it's the M. Night Shyamalan classic. And that's the film we'll be covering on the podcast today. If you haven't listened to How to Survive before, what we tend to do around these parts is talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about the film. Maybe explore a few themes and ideas that the film throws up and then talk about how we ourselves would survive if we found ourselves in the film. But before mm. we do all that, we need to recap the plot, which of course means spoiling it completely and... The Sixth Sense, of course, is famous <laughs> for a twist. For a twist. So if you haven't seen it... And somehow have become immune from it. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone that I'm going to talk about later. Yeah. Uh, then make sure you duck out now and rectify that. Mm. How to Survive is also on Patreon now. Yes. If you missed the last couple of episodes, you can go to patreon.com forward slash how to survive pod if you like the podcast and want to hear more of it. Yeah. More of the same or... Uh, some of something new as well. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that, Joe. Well, without further ado, Joe, let's roll on with the plot recap after this. You know the accident up there? Yeah. A lady. She broke her neck. Oh, my God. Where is she? Standing next to my window. You have a secret, but you don't want to tell me. I see dead people walking around like regular people. I don't see anything. Are you sure they're there? They're everywhere. Ah! They want me to do things for them. I think that they know that you're one of these very rare people who can see them. So you need to help them. What if they don't want to help? I don't think that's the way it works. How do you know for sure? Not every gift. Is anyone there? Is a blessing. Look out! The sixth sense. Please make them be. I'm working on it. I see dead people. Malcolm Crow, a successful child psychologist based in Philadelphia, is confronted in his home by Vincent, an ex patient of his who claims Malcolm was unable to help him. Vincent shoots Malcolm and then himself. The next autumn, Malcolm begins working with Cole Sear, a child whose mother believes is struggling with his social development. In fact, Cole confides in Malcolm that he can see dead people walking around unaware that they are dead. Hmm. It takes like an hour and a half to get to that point. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because you, like, the, the movie is I See Dead People, mm -hmm. but it takes hours to get there. Yeah, it's weird. This is quite a short recap mm. because despite the film being two hours long the, like th five things happen in it yeah right yeah malcolm's relationship with his wife has become strained since the shooting and he believes that in order to reconcile with his wife he must help cole thereby making up for his apparent failure with vincent at first he believes cole is delusional but comes to believe him and suggests cole find a purpose for the visions by attempting to help the ghosts reconcile with their past one night cole finds the ghost of a recently deceased girl vomiting in his room he and malcolm go to her wake where they find a videotape showing that she was being habitually poisoned by her mother they show the videotape to the girl's father thereby saving her sister from the same fate mm -hmm. and that kind of allows the the ghost girl to yeah move uh, on yes to yeah to her spirit to no longer be restless Meanwhile, Malcolm realises, through listening back to an old tape, that Vincent was also plagued by visions of ghosts. 
Cole learns to deal with the ghost's presence and turns his life around, no longer requiring Malcolm's services. They share an emotional goodbye and Cole suggests talking to his wife as she sleeps. So Mal- Malcolm talking to his wife, not yes. Cole talking to his own wife. Yes. Cole is 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Cole confides his secret to his mother, who believes him once he shares knowledge of events only his mother and grandmother were privy to. Malcolm returns home to find his wife watching their wedding video. She drops a wedding ring, his, and he realises that when he was shot, he in fact died. His distance from his wife was not caused by a falling out, but by his death. He was one of the ghosts who was unaware that he was dead. As she sleeps, Malcolm tells his wife he loves her and that she was never second to anything in his life. Thanks to Cole's efforts, Malcolm's unfinished business is resolved and his spirit departs. So that was the sixth sense, Mm. uh, the M. Night Shyamalan classic. How do you say it? Shyamalan? Shyamalan. 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 I don't know. Uh, it was his breakout hit. I think it's easy to uh, his debut to, film. To see. Yeah, um, well, no, he did a film before this, um, which is is yeah. yeah like, I think it's cult, but I don't think anyone really knows. He actually did two films before this. One in ninety two, which was called Praying with Anger, and then a comedy drama called Wide Awake after mm. that in nineteen ninety eight. Um, uh, was he in both of those as well? I almost certainly. We yeah. can, we'll get onto that. I'm sure. Uh, but this was definitely his breakout hit. It made $672 million at the box office from a $40 million budget. Not bad. Uh, which is, a, you'd be hard pressed to find a film with a $40 million bu- dollar budget these days, I think, because mm. it's an example of the sort of now extinct, like, double A movie. Yeah. Nowadays, you only what, get... What do you mean by double A? Just the, well, so, the so you'd get like a triple A movie, which is like a blockbuster that costs $250 million and is almost always insulated from losses because it's you know they mm. spend another 250 million on marketing and yeah, it's right. almost always like a established property and all too that. big to fail yeah and then you also get you know loads of 10 million dollar movies mm-hmm. uh because they're they're reasonable to make but you get fewer what you'd call i guess like mid-level films that are a little bit of a punt financially mm. but not too big like more of an art like a sort of high budget art house film almost yeah i mean the horror genre has got a lot of those in recent years i think yeah um yeah but i think i think that these sorts of films are few and far between these days mm. uh is it a horror do you think uh is it reminded me a lot of some of the j horrors that we covered recently so mm. uh dark water or Juon, the grudge yeah, it's got all those elements, isn't it? Yeah, so by that I mean, like, it's a kitchen sink drama with ghosts, essentially. Yeah. And, like, the scenes where Cole's mother is frantic about his apparent mental health issues, and the scenes where Cole is, like, frightened to the point of tears and anxious about the world around him, but you don't, at this point, know uh, that he can see dead people, mm-hmm. are just, like so harrowing yeah they're They're so upsetting upsetting. yeah for example when he gets locked in the yeah cupboard i think you know at that point but i think he said i see dead people and bruce willis no because it's in the hospital when he's recovering yeah he tells bruce willis oh yeah you're right um in any case the breakup stuff with Mm. like um malcolm and his wife yeah is tragic but it feels almost cliche and predictable and i think that's like to the benefit of it because you don't question it because you've seen it all before it right? yeah it's, it's, a, it's a tale as old as time a guy throws himself into his work and his marriage falls apart so you don't worry about that too much so in that way it's a almost cliche drama but hmm. done like pitch perfectly i think yeah so and you, then ghosts yes plus ghosts did you enjoy it i loved it i think it's like genuinely amazing obviously i've seen it before so i know mm-hmm. how it ends um, but it's it's shown me this throughout time around that it's very minimalist. It's like there's not like nothing happens. Yeah, for the whole film, like three things happen. Like you said, it's tense. It's shocking. It's very moving. Yeah. At the end, I was like quite affected. And it's I think it's probably a masterpiece. You could say like it just it just is. It's just a really amazing film. Yeah, I think it was nominated for something like nine Academy Awards and didn't win any. Really? Yeah, should have won them all. Well, one it should have won, I think, definitely is Haley Joel Osman for yeah. Best Supporting was he Actor. Supported, he, was, was he nominated for that? Yeah. He amazing. is yeah. absolutely magnificent. Yeah. And I think he's sort of an 
unfortunate victim of like early noughties pastiche culture mm. but looking back on it like i just have memories of you know i see dead people uh being parodied in things like scary movie yeah, or like right, mtv yeah. movie awards and all that yeah, sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. like you can imagine justin timberlake playing yeah. Haley joel osmond playing right. you know um, but I think it's really rare to see such a dynamic and like emotionally mature performance from a young actor. It's really like, it's just amazing. Like, and he, he, he holds his own with the adult actors. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and Bruce Willis is, you know, when he's, when he's interested, Bruce Willis is really good. Tony Collette is a great actor, Yeah, uh, but, he, but he's got like this rhythm and this timing and like this, you know, he, he leaves like pauses and. All these sorts of things, which feel completely natural, yeah, yeah, but also like very dramatic and scripted and directed, yeah, in a really like quality way. Yeah, it's a yeah. very, very good performance. Uh, I'd say you know, in most horror movies with children, the ch- child is scary, yeah, but in this, he's scared, and mm. that's what's scary. It's like you're scared for him. If you know what I mean? Yeah, those eyes as well. Yeah. Like when they're filling up with tears, yeah. it's like impossible not to feel really like so know, massive sympathy for him. Yeah. Uh, I read Roger Ebert's review of this mm-hmm. of Sixth Sense, and he says Bruce Willis is so good because basically, in any situation, you could put him in sci-fi or fantasy or anything you want, and he's exactly the same uh, in all of them. Mm. He only has one style of acting, but it works in those settings because he just plays everything completely straight. Yeah. And it works in this because he's just like a normal guy. Mm-hmm. Like he plays normal guy really well, but but in a convincing way. Yeah, yeah. He also said that he he works well with Haley Joel Osment because he doesn't patronize him. Mm. Like he, there's no sense that he's coaching him or uh, helping him along. It, he he plays it as if he's hearing from a child that the kid is in mental anguish. Yeah, they they're all very naturalistic performances. Mm. I think. Um, I mean, I yeah, I agree. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a really wonderful ghost story and it's rare that a plot twist doesn't sort of leave you it's not like a sucker punch of a it kind of, it, it's weird isn't it because yeah. the plot twist is uh sad because a man is dead yeah but also it's like very full-hearted and you know it's like melancholic, isn't it? It's like bittersweet because yeah. he does reconcile with his wife. He realizes that his wife hasn't fallen out of love with him. Mm. It's that he's dead. Right. So you think she's watching the wedding videos because she's like over him and she's like, where did it all go wrong? Yeah. But really she just misses him. Yeah. And it's just horrible. It's, it's tragic. You know? It's tragic. But in a sort of very um, like like full hearted way do you know, do you yeah, know what yeah, i mean no, about yeah, that? yeah. Like, and when you know okay obviously you've seen it before so you knew the twist yeah watching it this time i didn't find it shocking because i knew it was coming i found it just like immensely sad yeah just like i want i it's it's difficult isn't it because it's kind of like m night Shyamalan has achieved lightning in a bottle with this movie because he can never do anything like this again right there can never be a twist this good again yeah by him because everyone assumes that he's going to have a twist in his well, that, that's it isn't it like we're covering another M. Night film next week which is Signs mm. um, and when we're talking about that I want to talk about like what you think the twist is right because you obviously now go into any M. M. Night, Night film, film yeah. and ask what the twist is and that's like a it's become a millstone isn't it for yeah him. right exactly because he he can never probably he can never properly surprise you because you're waiting for the surprise. Yeah, exactly. And he's a, he's an exceptionally talented director, right? He's in you know in signs as well, and in this, there's just like a patience and a like a way of shooting things and framing shots, blocking things that is just like obviously masterful. If you know what I mean? Yeah, he's got he's I I think it's like sort of quietly audacious filmmaking. Yeah. Like there's, it, a, there's an amazing shot at the beginning. The, the movie Sixth Sense opens with his wife um, going down to get a bottle of wine out of the cellar, mm-hmm. but, the, but it opens on like the light bulb uh, and it with this uh, like an Edison style bulb, just slowly like heating up and getting more bright. Mm-hmm. And then it pans down. It's like it's, it takes ages. It's yeah. really slow, and methodical, but it, like it just adds to the tension. I think. Yeah, he loves he loves a long take as well, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. Like this scene where. Um, 
Tony Collette walks out of the kitchen and walks back in and yeah, all the cupboard doors good. are open. Yeah. Uh, I watched this in a, I think, like year nine English okay. class yeah. at school with our friend Ollie. Mm-hmm. And Ollie does not like horror movies. No. Um, I think that's fair to say. And he literally, the, the camera came back into the kitchen yeah. with all the cupboard doors open and he went, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what is not even it. a jump yeah it's not even like a jump scare no i think that it, it does it goes there's like a trumpet like <laughs> no i think i think tony collette gasps right. but i don't think there's a musical key, i don't think there's a musical st- sting for it because it's it's it definitely falls more into the drama side yeah there it? are some like stings like the come on i'll show you my dad keeps his gun yeah yeah, they, they, yeah i'm not saying it's 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 but it's it's light on scares, I think. It's light on the light on scares, light on the causes of scares. Mm. Um despite being riddled with ghosts. Like most of the ghosts just appear sort of <laughs> yeah. fairly um you know what's the first one you see? Is uh the woman, Why did you do this to me? Look what you made me do. That woman. Yes, in the kitchen. Yeah. She's the one opening all the covered doors. Yeah. Great. Because she's trying to make dinner or something. Brilliant. Um yeah, good. Uh uh, yeah, I think it feels more like a sort of Victorian ghost story, doesn't it? It does. Um, and it's like deeply tra- All the, the ghost stories are tragic as well. Yeah. For, for some reason, for years, I thought that this film was set in Victorian times. You really? know, like turn of the century. Mm. And I think Even it's... Even though you'd seen it. Yeah. I think, I think it's because there's essentially no technology in it, aside from a tape recorder, which is sort of incidental. It's a, a, a video video recorder, I guess. Well, there's a TV because he throws his shoe at it. When they, like, That's true, yeah. There's a weird like, B, but, but B plot it... where like, there's a kid at school who's in a toothpaste commercial or something. Yeah, that's true. That's quite funny. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. It's like technology doesn't hugely factor into the story, I don't no. think. Um, and yeah, for some reason, I just, I just... Maybe it's because it's like a Victorian ghost story that I just assumed... Or like remembered it being. Oh, wait, wait, wait. even though era. you'd seen it, you thought it was. This was like I'd seen it, and then five years later, right, you saw I've... it as a child. Yeah, or like yeah. I don't know, teenage. Like I wasn't going like, oh, do you remember that bit where they where get a horse and, and carriage yeah. round, <laughs> yeah. and like um, Bruce Willis is twiddling his cane around or yeah. whatever. It was just yeah, like I, I, I thought it was sort of turn of the century, you know, maybe like thirties mm. America or something like that. Um, which which it isn't. Just to make it clear for anyone who's listening, <laughs> yeah. uh, don't don't make the mistake I did. Um, yeah. So like, is the, this is the best film ever he's made? It's a good film. It's the best film M Night's made. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. By a country mile. Yeah. He get he gets some sort of like gothic Hamblin tone going. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like the Spielberg 80s films. Yeah. Like he's definitely a big Spielberg nut, isn't he? Well, yeah, like the long takes and the character driven performances. Like they're they're all essentially family dramas, the movies he makes, right? Yeah. But with some bombastic event that happens. That, yeah. Which yeah. is which is exactly exactly the Spielberg thing. Yeah, exactly. Um Yeah. And uh, he's also very good at pulling performances out of actors who in lots of other work, just phone it in. Like himself? Less so. <laughs> um, more the, um, uh, I would say the guy, I would say um, Mel Gibson in Signs. Right. Is is pretty good. Uh, and Bruce Willis, obviously, is seems interested and, you know, like... Yeah, maybe he was still at this point. Like, there's a point where I think... I think around the time Red came out, where gives uh, Bruce Willis was just like, no, yeah, I don't want to be an actor anymore. But yeah. I'll, I'll keep showing up because I get paid well. Yeah, exactly. Maybe Sin City was the last movie where he seemed to care. I mean, we'll talk next week when we do signs about his oeuvre. In yeah, more detail. Good and bad. Uh, but there's some very good films. Well, there's two very good films, and then there's some. Let's say there's two AAA films, and the rest are rubbish. Well, Unbreakable is pretty good. Unbreakable is good. Unbreakable is good. But it's but like, you mean Sixth Sense and signs. signs, as this is nominally good Shyamalan season yeah. on How to Survive podcast. Yeah, but there's some absolutely wretched films yeah, in there as well. absolutely. Well, look forward to that deep dive next week. Yeah. Um, 
like you said, this is... Would you say this is the most iconic plot twist in cinema? I think so. I think like when, when you say twist in movie, this is probably what comes up in yeah. most people's minds. Uh, or most people who are of a similar age to us mm-hmm. and have a similar cultural upbringing. Yeah. But there's there's obviously other twists in movies. Um, Fight Club is a very famous one. Yeah. Like, uh, Shutter Island. I don't think Shutter Island's up there with, like, as in infa- infamy. Usual Suspects. Stakes. Yeah, Usual Suspects is very famous. Uh, the Crying Game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Psycho. Psycho. Well. That, is that a twist? Yeah, I think killing. Oh, yeah. Killing, um, no, the, the twist is later. I, well, there's two twists. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the big twist is surely there's killing a, like, the star. A storytelling twist and a plot twist. Yes. Uh, the boy. Let's not forget the absolute <laughs> gut punch at the end of the boy. Yeah. Brums. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The boy. What a film. Uh, is that yeah. your favourite twist ever? Uh, oh, definitely. Surely. Um, it's remarkably... I, I was going to do... Um, twists in movies quiz yeah but i thought that might be a bit unfair it's quite a big spoiler <laughs> yeah. potential there isn't it um spe- speaking of spoilers as well somehow my partner had gone through life not really having heard of the sixth sense and having no memory of the ha- having never heard of the twist either really yeah Absolutely, absolutely no mm. knowledge about it. You mean your life partner, romantic partner, not like yes. your business partner? Yeah. Well, you you are as close to um, a business partner as I have, and I have seen the Sixth Sense, and you have seen the Sixth Sense famously. Um, but she sat down to watch this with me, and I didn't say anything about there being a twist because I didn't want her. I didn't want to colour her expectation. Mm. But what I did do was record her reaction on my phone okay, nice. as it happened. So let's hear that now. Hmm? I oh, see people. Goodness me. Oh no. They don't know they're dead. How often do you see them? Yeah, that's very cool. So just to be clear, the um, the oh no, oh no <laughs> was not in the film. That was Kelly. That that was Kelly, my partner, yeah. um, realizing that uh, mm. Bruce Willis was a ghost. And she cried at the end as well. She was crying at the end. Yeah, yeah it you. hit her emotionally. Uh, no, because I'd seen it before and I knew what happened. I cried. I knew what was happening and it's still... Fucking grow up. <laughs> Imagine crying at a film yeah. about a little kid. <laughs> Pathetic. Have you? What was the last movie you cried at? Um, Are you a bit of a, a statue when it comes to crying? No, not at all. I do, I do cry at films yeah. often. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the most recent one was. Harry, Harry, Harry Potter? I did Harry Potter. You cried during Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's moving. Yeah, I don't do, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not precious about crying. I'll cry now. I'll cry now. Fuck. I mean, I'll tell you what. I I cried watching fucking uh the happening. Is that one? Yeah, yeah. I did cry watching that. But like in anguish. <laughs> yeah. It's. A brilliant twist, and I think, like all great twists, it rewards a second viewing after you know what's happening. Yes. It's very um, well played, I think. Yeah, it, I think there's a few things that come to mind about why that works. One is, like, it's played... 
like it's not like it doesn't hint at there being some no like rug pulling involved it's just like it sets up nicely it goes on and you're like oh, okay right this that kind of film it's mm-hmm. a character drama with a sh- yeah someone getting shot in it and like i said before the the love story which is probably where you get the most clues that he's not alive mm-hmm. are a cliche right yeah so you're like these are scenes i've seen before these are all exactly like, yeah. yeah yeah so you don't question them yeah and and also it does a great job of like implying that you've come in at the end of conversations a lot. Mm. For example, Cole comes home and finds Malcolm sitting in the living room with his mum. Yeah, and they're just like basically staring at each other. Yeah, only yeah. they're not because his mum doesn't can't see him and has no <laughs> yeah. no understanding yeah. that he's there. Yeah. But the way it's cut, you assume that they've just been talking about Cole, basically. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of that throughout the film. There's a scene um, involving a doctor, I mm. think, who says that Cole's going to have to be taken in. Yeah. And um, Malcolm sat there like head in his hands, like. Yeah. And I think at some point he goes, like, Gah! Yeah. Like, so, like, yeah. yeah. But obviously, th- it no one reacts to yeah. it. It's very, it's very well played. And but I forgot that it's, it's really audacious with how, um, how close it comes to just telling you. Yeah. So, for example, do you, the, the camera zooms in on Malcolm's face mm. as Cole is giving his I see dead people speech. Really? It's just a, a zooming shot of Malcolm's face <laughs> as he's going, I see dead people all Cut the time. Yeah. yeah, all the time. They're everywhere. They don't know they're dead. They don't know they're dead. <laughs> and it's just Bruce Willis going, hmm, that's, that is interesting. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah. 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 The, the, wait, does Cole knows Malcolm's dead, right? Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which, is, which, like I said, when you rewatch it, every interaction he has with him is like a delight to yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah. It's good. The there's some plot discrepancies, okay. which are just like there's a catch-all that is put in there, which covers them all. Which is ghosts see what they want to see. It's okay. Like, it's like, oh yeah, wait, well. Like, why didn't he just talk to her? Like, why? How does he not know that he hasn't spoken to her for like six months? Yeah, and he said, "Go see what they want to see, mate." Yeah, like, every every movie should have a disclaimer at the start saying, "Our characters see what they want to see," yeah. and <laughs> that would just get around all logical inconsistencies. And That's true. Yeah, if, at the beginning of Star Wars, it's like, like Luke's, <laughs> the, the force, the force works however you yeah. want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah, that's fair enough. Hmm. So is that is that a complaint about the film that you have then? No, no, it's not. It's a, it's a very it's a, there's a, there's a lot of hand waving going on. Isn't it's there? a little yeah. It's a bit it's a bit mealy mouth, but it's like it doesn't stop it being an amazing film. No, it's it's almost like that is the formula that the, that is the potion you take to make the film just get away with everything. Yeah, because if you if you sat down and went like you know what well, like how how yeah. does he not realize that he hasn't eaten in yeah, six exactly. months etc yeah. like yeah what, 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 like because the first thing i thought was what's happened in the last three months because it jumps to the, the fall yeah right? it says like meanwhile like or six months later or whatever yeah and you're like, well, i know he's dead does he what's he been doing does he yeah. not remember like the like dying well that's yeah. that's it i wonder if it's almost like he, he just gets dumped in that moment yeah he drifts in and out of yeah. you know like he he's not in every scene yeah it's like you could assume that he essentially just doesn't exist when mm. when the camera's not on him. Yeah, and he he just makes up a. Yeah, he yeah. just doesn't think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking like, what? Well, how did he get to the? How did he know Cole was a child who needed a child psychologist? Exactly. And why has yeah. he got a clipboard? And I'm like, well, and then he's like, go see what they want to see, mate. And like, yeah, fine. But then yeah. isn't it just that he is a child psychologist who died, and Cole is a boy who sees ghosts? Yeah, no, yeah. So it's, it, yeah. it's not necessarily that, Carl, like, neither one of them sought the other one out. They were just brought together by fate. Yeah, just just happenstance, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like um, Inception when they're in the dream mm. and... Hold on, spoilers. What and, twist? And um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character highlights the film editing. Yeah. He goes like, how did we get here? And she's like, oh, we walked. And he's like, no, how did we get here right now? Mm. And you realise that he's drawing attention to the fact that the scene cut. started in the middle when they were like sat at the table. Yeah, um, It's a bit like that, isn't it? Like Bruce Willis, like if you stopped and said to him, like, 
why are you here? Why are you here? How did he, you get here? Yeah. yeah. He'd just like explode. Yeah. he turned into dust. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't, it does feel like, because it, it, it's very meandering in that way, right? That it's not like, there's no urgency to anything. It no. just sort of like floats between scenes. Yeah. And like you said, it opens halfway through conversations or mm. like he's just walking down the road with Cole and it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter how he got there. Because yeah. everything that happens in between, like you don't get the scenes of him, like just eating dinner because he doesn't no. eat because he's a ghost. It's very, very clever, I think. Yeah. Well, with all that said, Joe, uh, it's one of the lower body count films that I, we've done. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, two. Um. Yeah. So, how would you survive? Um. Well, I don't have anything. I just I don't have anything. Okay. Like he's he's he he's, he's, he's dies is on rails. What can you do? Well, here's one. Um, don't, don't shoot yourself in the head if you're Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah, I mean Donnie Wahlberg I, looks better. Look, look better in his life. Isn't he? Yeah, in Saw Two. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, I've got one, yeah. uh, which is less of a, a survival idea and more a criticism of the American healthcare system. Okay. Uh, so six doctors and none of them went with poisoned. Yeah, that's true. This is in relation to the girl who is being poisoned by mm. her mum um, and appears as a vomiting ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the wake, we overhear snatches of conversation. Yeah. And one says, how many doctors was it? And it's six. And like they still didn't know what was going on. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess that um, if you're being poisoned with like bleach or whatever it is, drain yeah. cleaner, mm. that's going to show up certain symptoms. Like burnt stomach. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, they think they think they post mortem her because she died of no apparent illness. Yeah. And immediately after she died, the sister began to get ill as well. Yeah. Which like, is uh, what which is what another person says at the at the wake. Like no. Cole has a bruise on him and uh, yeah, Doctor exactly. Doctor M Night Shyamalan's like yeah, where's we've the, got the social services. Where's in. bloody M Night in that situation? Yeah. He should be wading right in, going right now. Something is clearly <laughs> this is not fishy. Here. Yeah, yeah. something smells a drain cleaner. I'm, I'm an expert in plot twists. <laughs> I did like there was a good part where um, Malcolm's telling Cole a bedtime story, and he's like, "No, no, no, you, you don't know how to tell stories. Yeah, they, they, you don't have to. They need twists. Yeah. It's gonna be twists. Yeah, it's, it's all there. It's all there. Um, just like." If if a girl is getting sick repeatedly at the same time every day, yeah. take her in for observation, mm. put her in hospital. If she starts getting better in hospital, then maybe it's something to do with her environment. You've been watching too much house, mate, haven't you? Mate, this is so basic, though. Yeah. I have done I've done zero uh, medical training. You have watched a lot of house. I've watched a lot of house. It's a good show. Goes off the rails a bit towards the end. Yeah, a little fine. bit. <laughs> um, when he's like in a burning building. No, yeah. it's when he's like driving a car through his. Uh, X is living room. Brilliant. Um, if I could admit. Hello yeah, drug. that's fine. Uh, do you think this is the result of the American healthcare system? Do you think this is a critique from Shyamalan on the state of the American healthcare system? Well, not really. They've, also, they've still taken the Hippocratic Oath. And in fact, they're probably more incentivized to do a better job because they're being paid. Yeah. So you're in favor of a um, paid no, for I'm, I'm healthcare just, system? No, I'm not. I'm not in favor. Abolish fav- the, S- yeah, ab- so abolish the NHS. The NHS. Would this happen on the NHS? Yes, it would, because they're 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 stressed out, man. They've got they've got too many. So you think people to see? So you think this is actually imagining a world where there's a socialist healthcare system in the United States? Because but they're overstretched. No, it can't be because there's six doctors. Imagine having six doctors to one person. Like if I was there's the more if doctors I was than the, people. If I was the fifth doctor, doctors aren't people. If I was the fifth doctor, yeah, I'd be like, right, let's look at what who, they've who ruled that? out. Tom Baker. Well, I doctor. don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'd look at what they've ruled out mm. and I'd go, well, let's think outside the box here. Maybe her very polite mum is, in fact, suffering from yeah. Munchausen by proxy. The one who is like adjusting the roses and wearing a bright red dress at the funeral. Yeah. Do you exactly. think she's got an attention thing going on? Yeah. Quite possibly. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, th- did, did, I also think that the father should bear some of the responsibility did. because... You know, if the only way that you can communicate with your daughter is she leaves you a videotape after she's died, mm. then it would suggest that you're you don't have the closest relationship with her. Yeah, mate. That's maybe that's capitalist. Maybe you had to work all day and all night. Three jobs. Right. So you think Oh Tony Collette's got two jobs. She can't yeah. go to any uh, shows. Do you think The Sixth Sense is the most left wing film that we've covered politically? Yeah. Definitely. I, I don't know how you didn't get it. I see dead people 
walking around everywhere because they're about to drop dead because of their, um, the capitalist world is squeezing mm. them to death. I, I mean, you make it your own one. The, the point I have... Old, it's it's uh, authorial intent, like we said the other week. Yeah, exactly. Like, if yeah. it's in the film, if it, it must read be it in there. It must be intentional. Yeah. Uh, what's the, the vomit girl's name? Uh, I don't know, but she's played by Misha Barton. Is she? The, yeah, of the OC. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So Misha's, uh, Misha dies of the poison. Yes. And she seems to know that she died of poison. Because, yes. Would you tell someone? Yeah. She fucking tell someone. Don't tell your dad. Yeah. He's, he's been into visit, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Dad. He lives there. Mum's mum's been slipping. You know, she gives me that tomato soup every day. Yeah. She she puts um drain cleaner in it. Yeah. She whenever she brings my lunch, she also brings a bottle of like you know <laughs> <laughs> drain Sulf- you sulfuric go. Acid. <laughs> yeah. Um and I'm so conscious of this that I've actually set up a camera to film yeah. it. No, it seems to be it was by accident because she was filming a little play with the play the puppets. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think she did know though, unless she found she must out have done, yeah. when she was dead by watching the tape. But she, she that's not a, a it's not shown. We can't no. assume anything. We can't assume that ghosts have the power to watch videotapes. Yeah. In the box. <laughs> so long story short. Um long story short is if you're a doctor involved in the case, then check for signs of poisoning because mm. there will be loads of them. Uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do a bo- why is her stomach burned out? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're the father, then pay some attention and ask. Some this questions. is good parenting advice for you. Yeah. Uh, in case Hannah starts poisoning your yeah, child. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll just be like every day. If I cook all the meals, then yeah, the, we can't take any chances. That's true. Then who cooks my meals? Yeah. Who watches the watch? For exactly. Um, and also, uh, if you're the girl, your suggestion was tell someone. Yeah. Which is fair. Tell a doctor. Tell anyone. Ridiculous. Have uh, any more sprung to mind for you? No, they're quite mealy mouth. I Avoid mean, the Ghostbusters. Yeah. At all costs. Yeah. I mean, Bruce Willis, is it a, is it a sad ending for him? You know, he's dead from the start. Like, he yeah. dies in, within three minutes. He's, he's at dead. peace, isn't he? But he's dead. He, like, the, but it's in, it's academic the to give him advice because he's already dead. Yeah. As are uh, all of the rest of the characters. And, and he film. essentially has as happy an ending as he can, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, goes, he fades to white, which suggests he's gone to heaven yeah. rather than fading to like fire. Brimstone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> he's like, yeah. oh, I think uh, I can finally I go can now. Find, yeah. <laughs> and then the devil says, You didn't help that boy. <laughs> <laughs> You've made everything worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no ad- no advice from Malcolm then. <laughs> He's dead. Like the only advice is wear, wear a bulletproof vest on date night. Well, so speaking of protective at- attire, mm. um, the woman who dies in the accident that right. Cole sees what, towards like, the end. Um, the lady died. Yeah. She's standing outside my window. Parodied in spaced. Yeah. Uh, to great effect. Yes. A lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's wearing a helmet, isn't she? Yeah. And yet there's a big trickle of blood coming down from where her helmet is attached to her head. Now, yeah. a head wound, despite wearing a helmet, would suggest that either the helmet is not of sufficient quality or it's a poor fit. Would you agree? Or both? Or both. I mean, fine. My advice to her is that you should make sure you always wear a helmet and that it's a good one. Mm. Full face. Just yeah, a uh, <laughs> giant box. <laughs> Put your head helmet. in a safe. <laughs> yeah, and then then ride your bike. Yeah, and then ride your bike. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I I also have you ever heard this myth that goes around a lot mm. um, that wearing a helmet makes you less safe. Um, yeah, because isn't it that like when you don't wear a helmet, people are more wary of you, so they give you a wider berth. Yeah, which is just ridiculous yeah now the reason it's ridiculous is that i'd wager probably 95 percent of road accidents involving a cyclist uh are situations where the driver is completely unaware of the cyclist yeah right or you've they, been you've been hit by cars before yeah cycling. on my bike a few yeah. times yeah 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 like the guy was texting and he pulled into me yeah um slipped on a train cover a few times <laughs> that's which is like just user error yeah um Problem on bike, not yeah, in car. Exactly, yeah. Uh, there is a, a, 
mis- malfunction between the saddle and the handlebars. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that happened. Another time a woman stepped out in front of me. Like, I was riding alongside a traffic jam and she just like walked out in front. It's like mm-hmm. I had to hit the brakes and crash into her car. So yeah, it's just it's other people just texting all the time. Yeah, not being aware of you, right? Yeah. Which if if they're not aware of you at all, they're not mm. gonna be aware of you not wearing a helmet. No one's ever looked at someone wearing a helmet and thought I'll That's speed safe up. to pull in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll speed up because yeah. if I hit them, they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can drive within inches of them because they've got a helmet on. That'll take yeah. care of them if I if I roll over their legs, yeah. then they'll be fine because they're wearing a helmet. Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean, we all know we we all know people who've been badly injured in cycling accidents. Yeah. And again, I don't believe that any of that would would you know is the result of them wearing a helmet. You know that you know our friend who was in a, an accident. Yes, he wasn't wearing a helmet. I know. Yeah, yeah. he had it on his handlebars. He's an idiot. Yeah. Oh mate, if you're listening, had it on his handlebars. It's not going to do him any good there, is it? No. And not going to do you any good, uh, listener, if you don't wear your helmet while you're riding a bike. Push bike, motorbike, both. Yeah. <laughs> no, motorbike's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's like a motocross <laughs> bike. That's yeah. that's double safe. Because so, if you crash, you'll probably be thrown from the bike. Yeah. Land on your feet and walk yeah, off. Yeah. Exactly. Uh yeah, what would Jason Statham do? Uh what would he do? I don't know. He'd probably land on his land into a combat role and then mm, land fly and kick bike. someone. Land on another another bike. bike. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I want to go see Hobbs and um Shaw, whatever yeah. it is. Final Fantasy. Hobbs and, no, what is it? F- Fast and the Viewer, it's not Final Fantasy. Hobbs and what? Hobbs and Shaw. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Final it's Fantasy got, um, Final Fantasy and the Furious. It's uh, got uh, Roman Reigns in it. Yeah, man, that's why I want to see it. Yeah, he even does his like. Thing. But is he um, Maori? Is he married? Maori. <laughs> I was gonna say, you get in, get in there. Is he? Is he married? He is Samoan. Samoan. Same, same as he's a rock. He's a rock cousin. Yeah. Many of the uh, roster in the WWE are cousins of Dwayne Johnson, and he plays a cousin of the Rock in the film. Yeah, amazing, amazing. How it's just art. Like reflecting reality, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? I I want like I can only assume because of like the way he's built, he's gonna have a scene where he's like got a chain wrapped around his hand, like well, a bald fist. We've seen and, like, the tra- we've seen the punches a car over. <laughs> a we've seen, there's car. a scene in the trailer yeah. where the Rock is, it's implied I think, single handedly stopping a truck from going off a cliff by like gripping it with a chain and like Man, pulling yes. it back onto land or something like that. He's a big boy. He is a big I lad. Can believe it. Yeah, yeah. He's not he's not sulking, is he? He is bulking. <laughs> Absolutely bulking. Can we go see it? Maybe we'll do it as a bonus episode. Maybe, on yeah. If I tell you what, if you're uh, if you're a patron, mm. then um comment on the post for this podcast underneath and tell us whether you want us to cover Hobbs and Shaw as what would it be? October's yeah. no September's bonus episode. Yes. Um, and we will we'll bang it out. <laughs> we'll bang it out. Yeah. Be great. What a what a joy. The Fast and the Furious. Isn't it's, it's not. It's called like the Fast, Fast and, and Furious. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious Hobbs presents and Hobbs and Shaw. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fast and Furious is like it, an industry in its own right now. Yeah. It's a company. Fuck me. Well, we didn't expect to be talking about that today. Yeah. With all that said, thank you for listening to How to Survive the Sixth Sense. Uh. Next week, we're covering Signs, another M. Night Shyamalan film. Will you have some survival ideas for that, Joe? Yes, mate. I do have some. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just... I, it's, it's difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. A romantic, like, gothic drama about a ghost yeah. is not uh, a survival film traditionally. Yeah. No. Uh, but uh, a good film. And, and it's unsurvivable. Yeah. Because everyone's already dead when, when I'm on this scene. Spoilers, mate. When they... When they call me in as, the, as a survival yeah, expert exactly. I can't see anyone except the living people and yeah. they all survive the film <laughs> when yeah. Cole's like I see dead people I'm like well that doesn't that I, doesn't concern me yeah you're, and you say I, pe- I see people in peril yeah. and there's no one here yeah exactly I can't see anybody <laughs> thank you very much for listening the email address is howtosurviveshow at gmail.com the twitter handle is at howtosurvivepod and of course you can comment on our posts on patreon patreon.com forward slash how to survive pod yeah if you, you can pay- also, if, if you don't know how to spell patreon just go how to survive show.com yeah I've, I've redirected the website yeah. to our patreon page our beloved website which must have had so many visitors yeah, yeah. it's a 
It's a 301 redirect, Chris. Yeah. Um, which, if you don't know, is a permanent redirect. Right. <laughs> so so their website's gone. It's gone for good uh, in every sense yeah. of the word. So, uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for listening. And thank you if you support us on Patreon. Um, any support is in the camp counsellors tier. We'll get access to our weekly Patreon exclusive mailbag episodes, mm. uh, which we're recording this in advance, but I, they must be kicking off now. Yeah. In fact, there's one this Friday, which mm. all being well, should be the first one with some proper, some proper puzzlers book. for us to uh, we, we, show um, so with the With the mailbag, right? It's our agony aunt section, yes, essentially. Yeah. So, so if, if you, you've got questions other than film survival like this or anything like that, and you're like, you know, I'm going to prom and I want to ask a girl or a guy um, and I don't know how, yeah. email in. Yeah, if you're seeing dead people or if you are worried that you yourself might be dead, yeah. then please email in, email in, uh, comment on the Patreon posts or tweet us. And uh, also, while you're at it, don't forget to leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts uh, because that would really help us out. So thank you very much. Signs next week. And until then, stay safe, wear your helmet. Goodbye. <laughs>